My name is Nathan Tabor, and uh, like Frederick said, I lead product management for Kubernetes at AWS. I'm really excited to be here this morning, and I want to tell you that my team has two charters. The first charter is to ensure that AWS remains a trusted, reliable, and secure way to run Kubernetes at scale. And second, to engage and support the Kubernetes community. In the next few minutes, I'm going to tell you about some of the investments that Kubernetes makes in open source and why these investments are so critical. I'm also going to share three things that AWS has observed from our Kubernetes customers. So first, AWS has committed to support for open source in the long term. Sustainability is our guiding principle for these investments. Sustainable open source projects have the resources that they need to maintain healthy code and healthy communities. Our investments are both big and small, from bug fixes and code reviews to supporting major financial and organizational initiatives. I'd like to share a few of our largest recent contributions. First, last May, we announced $10 million in new funding for OpenSSF and the Open Source Security Foundation. In December, we committed our entire patent portfolio to the Open Innovation Network's body of patents to reduce the risk of patent aggression for companies that innovate with open source. In November, we pledged $3 million in cloud credits and dedicated engineering resources to the CNCF to fund the infrastructure that helps the Kubernetes project and many other projects in this community. This investment directly led to us helping the CNCF launch registry.cates.io which distributes hosting for Kubernetes and CNCF project images across cloud providers to improve speed and performance for image pulls. This change also significantly lowers the egress bandwidth and storage costs, which CNCF pays to serve Kubernetes across the community. Registry.cates.io doesn't just deliver a better user experience, it makes the Kubernetes project more sustainable. Across industries, companies tell us that up to 85% of their software stacks run on open source software. At Amazon, our teams use open source tools every day to deliver delightful experiences to millions of customers, from next day delivery to streaming shows, sports and movies, all the way to cloud services. We have a responsibility to advocate for things that are core to the continued development of technology and the internet. Open source gives us the opportunity to leverage the strengths and the resources of Amazon to benefit our customers and the entire community. It's no secret that a lot of Kubernetes runs on AWS. My team is lucky enough to speak and interact with thousands of Kubernetes users. So here are a few things that we've noticed. First, choice matters. Many of our customers choose Kubernetes because of the incredible amount of choice that they get to build their stacks. This conference represents that abundance. But this choice can also create a lot of undifferentiated heavy lifting. Kubernetes runs nearly everywhere, but the quality of integration and the underlying infrastructure can vary. So it's important to find the right balance for your company and your workloads. Which levers around flexibility really matter and to your teams and your customers, and which levers are undifferentiated? We see users who take the time to think about and answer these questions, assume the right level of responsibility for their use cases, and have the most success. Second, Kubernetes security is critical, but it's not guaranteed. There are layers of best practices to consider and controls to configure. Kubernetes offers the flexibility to create extremely secure environments, but this takes knowledge, planning, and constant effort. There are big opportunities in the community and providers to build and enhance security tools, which take advantage of emerging technologies like AI and global data sources to predict, find, and remediate security threats. There's a lot of attention in artificial intelligence right now, and we predict that using these tools will become a default, which makes Kubernetes easier to operate and more secure. And third, Kubernetes may have its roots in the microservices revolution, but it's rapidly expanded to nearly every type of application. So our customers are running data processing pipelines for new drug discovery, transaction management systems that support the world's largest banks, game servers with millions of players. They train autonomous vehicles in large language models. They run AI inference on Kubernetes, which can tell parents how well their child slept last night. This is my sixth KubeCon, and it's absolutely remarkable how many applications in so many industries have adopted Kubernetes. Kubernetes is truly a global operating system for applications, and there's a massive opportunity for all of us to keep innovating. Thank you very much. It's been an honor to speak with you today.